The sugar you have in your sugar bowl is called sucrose, scientifically. It's made from fructose and glucose. It is derived naturally from sources like sugarcane, or in the UK, which is a huge industry, from the sugar beet. So if it's a natural sweetener, why are we constantly running away from sugar? Well, for first, it is very high in calories. So it is linked to weight gain and uh, health conditions like obesity and type 2 diabetes. Public Health England recommends that we do not exceed 7 teaspoons of sugar a day. Wow, that may sound a lot. 7 teaspoons of sugar for an adult is the recommended value per day and 6 for a child. But what if I were to say that one can of Coke has eight teaspoons of sugar and that's your budget blown away just there. It is so easy to blow this budget because so many food products on our shelf have hidden sugars. Whether they are processed foods, packaged foods, sauces, condiments, desserts, yogurts, you name it. There is hidden sugar in a lot of things that you wouldn't have thought of. In order to control our sugar intake, there has been a new industry that's developed, a $3 billion industry called sweeteners. Let's talk about these sweeteners. Let's talk some food science. So we've established that sugar is naturally derived and there are other sweeteners that are naturally derived with less calories and less um, impact on your health. And those include stevia, honey, love, and coconut sugar. These naturally derived sugars don't spike your blood sugar levels like white processed sugar does, but they're still high in calories. One teaspoon of coconut sugar, for example, has 20 calories, just the same as processed white sugar. This gives room to artificial sweeteners which are calorie free or much less in calories. Great. Rock. Not great. Artificial sweeteners are not great for the gut. They do interfere with your gut microbiome. Do I really want to have artificial sweeteners mess with my gut? No. Artificial sweeteners, the most common ones are aspartum, sucralose, and saccharin. If I can avoid artificial sweeteners, I totally will. And stevia is my natural sweetener to go to when it comes to coffee. But it does have a slight licorice taste to it, so if you don't like the taste, it's not gonna be your preferred choice, but it's definitely great It's in terms of calories. But beware, I want to alert you into how you should read your labels. Stevia and stevial glycoside is not the same thing. Stevial glycoside is derived from the stevia plant, for sure, but it's a highly processed alcohol derived from this plant. So it's not gonna have the same benefits as pure stevia. Two other great natural sweeteners are Erythritol and xylitol. Xylitol and erythritol are both alcohols. They both end in all. They are great because they're low in calories and don't spike your blood sugar levels and mess with your insulin levels. But if you consume them in excess, it can create digestive issues. I don't think I've mentioned any sweetener or any naturally derived sugar today that you may not have heard of, but here's the thing. There is one culprit out there that I am so not a fan of, and this one is called Maltitol. Supermarket aisles are filled with products now with sweeteners and promising low sugar and low calories. These include energy bars, protein bars, sauces, desserts, cereals, I mean, the list is endless. Not only are these bars usually filled with artificial sweeteners, or if they are filled with natural sweeteners, they are con contributing to a high calorie intake, but some of them contain this wretched maltitol. And what is maltitol? Maltitol is found in a lot of energy bars, and as the word says and ends in all, it is a sugar alcohol and has been artificially processed from starches like corn, essentially by hydrogenating starches like corn starch. You know, it doesn't sound great. Companies are using maltitol more and more because it's a cheap alcohol to produce, a great sugar additive sweetener for your products, and it's virtually calorie free. But what they don't tell you is the effects that maltitol has on your gut. Yes, it causes bloatness, diarrhea, flatulence, gas, you name it. It is really not great for your gut microbiome. 
But actually, if you do have one of these energy bars and you do feel a bit gassy, you really now know why. So if my cookie is promising me that it's going to be low in calories and it's going to be sugar-free, it's going to contribute to weight gain? Wait, what? How is that possible? So products like this contain maltitol, which actually have a high glycemic index. Aha! Sweetener and with a high glycemic index. So they do contribute to the peak of your blood sugar levels the same way as sugar does. So you need to watch out for this maltitol when you next go shopping. So when it comes to glycemic index, maltitol scores super whopping high right up there with white processed sugar. So back to mommy mode. In my kitchen and to control my calorie intake, my preferred sweeteners are natural sweeteners. And I use stevia, which is calorie free and great tasting. But if you don't like the taste, your options are erythritol and xylitol. Both naturally derived, easily digested, low in calories, don't mess with your insulin levels. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? But if you're not worried about the calories or those extra pounds on your waist, then by all means use naturally derived sugars like coconut sugar, honey, agave, manuka honey. 